Good morning, my name is Terry Z. Lee. I have a, a nonprofit called Skywind World, and we are dedicated to using kites as a medium to get children and adults excited about science, engineering, uh, uh, aerodynamics, uh, technology, material science, physics, all the different things that it takes to make a kite. Uh, it's just a, a part of our natural world. As we like to say, kites are only superficially trivial. They have a long history. They're the beginning of aviation. Um, and they, there's a lot you can learn from making a kite. Kite. Today we're going to make an Eddie Bird kite. It's a variation of the old diamond kite. There'll be a straight stick going up and down, a curved stick going across the top, a bridle line that comes out, and your winder that you hold on to fly it. There are seven pieces in this kite, two sticks. These are the curved stick and the straight stick. This is uh, the bridle line, just a piece of string. These are the stickers that hold everything together. This is the body of the kite, and this is the tail of the kite. After, I always encourage people to maybe make a bird, make something attractive. It doesn't have to be a bird, uh, but we call it a bird kite because it does have this nice long tail to it. So you do all your designs beforehand on, on the front side, turn it over. The first stick goes straight up and down on the back. It doesn't go into the holes at all. It just goes straight up and down, put it right there, then you get a sticker. This is a Tyvek kite. These are Tyvek stickers. So they're specially made to stick really well on the kite. We use the same connection method every time. You take your finger and you put it on the sticker like this. Then you put it underneath the kite. And Tyvek sticks to Tyvek by using pressure and fingernails. So you want to scrape really hard to bond the sticker to the kite. And once it's on there really well, you put it right in the middle. You flip this over and you put it just on the stick, not on the kite itself. And I'm running my finger up and down. And then I take my fingers like this and pinch them together. I grab the bottom and run it right up the stick. And then I push on both sides, I push that down hard. But what it's done, it's created a little channel in the middle where it bumps over the stick. And there's a purpose for that. If your stick breaks, we're going to be able just to turn this and this stick is going to pop out, but it's going to leave this nice little channel in here so you can put a new stick in and repair your kite really quickly. After you do the bottom one, turn the kite around and do exactly the same on the top. Put a sticker on your finger. Again, underneath the beak, push it together so it sticks on there really, really well. Put the stick all the way up. You want to push it down so it's nice and tight. Flip it over, stick it just to the stick, and then channel it from the bottom and go up and stick that down really hard on both sides. See how nice and tight that is now? And it should go over the hole in the center and it should go right over the hole on the bottom. We're going to do the same thing now with the curved stick. This is a dihedral or an angle. Um, it's sometimes the very first algebraic term that that kids when I'm working with third or fourth or fifth graders, the first time they've learned it. This will create a wingspan that has a nice curve to it so the kite will be aerodynamic and it will fly well. And we're going to again do this the same way as we did the first one. We're going to put a sticker on my finger this goes right up to the outside edge. The sticker is going to go right to the edge. You can see how if I was going to follow the line down, it would go right down the edge and right exact off. 
we're going to get another sticker. There's two that go on each wing. This one goes underneath and goes straight up. It just follows this line straight up. So again, I'm going to stick them on hard. Now this stick we want to be sticking up in the air. We don't want it flat. You don't want it down at all. You want it to be sticking straight up in the air and you want to put it exactly halfway in between that sticker. So it's going to come and it's going to be coming over this, but it's sticking itself up in the air. I'm going to take the outside one first. I'm going to channel it. Same thing I did before, stick it down on both sides. This one goes down, bumps over the stick, and goes to the bottom, and that keeps it on there. So that stick is not going to come out at all unless it breaks and you twist it and need to replace it. This is going to go right across that center hole. We're going to go to the other side. I'll get two stickers real quickly out and do the crisscross again on the wing. Another way to do this is to take your two stickers and form a V or an L shaped, either one. This is the sticky side. And I'm going to just stick it right underneath the wing this time. Making sure that I just get it, that I get it positioned right. Now we're going to go down, see how that other wing flips up. We're going to put that down. And again, the outside one is going first. We'll channel it and grab the bottom. Then this one is going to go down, bump over, and go down. So we now have both of the sticks attached really well. Two stickers here, one at the bottom, one at the top. Now I'm going to put the tail on. Thank you. I put a little bit of color down at the bottom just so it's nice and airy and has a little bit of flash to it. We're going to attach this to the bottom of the kite with two stickers. Two more stickers come out. When we're all done with this, you're going to have some leftover stickers and keep those because those are your repair stickers. Things always happen to kites. They get wet, they break, you know, there's, they're, they're playing with the wind, as we say, dancing with the wind, and so there's always going to be things that happen. What we're going to do is lap these two over each other about half an inch. It doesn't take much. Take your sticker, start on the inside, and cover it going to the outside. And then push it on and rub it on real tight. And then you do that to the other side. So the whole tail, the entire top of the tail, is covered. And no air can get through that. So now we have the tail connected. Now we're going to create the bridle. We have to have, this is your, your bridle, your line. But we have to have something to attach it to so your kite can fly. And this is the bridle line. It's going to go in here, and we're going to tie it to the front stick. And it's going to go in there, and we're going to tie it to the back stick. And there's an easy way to do that. You just go in, make sure you grab both sticks in the back. We're going to go, as I tell the kids, crisscross applesauce. Go both sides. We're going to grab this kite now. So you can see I have that covering two sticks and tying them nice and tightly together. So on the front now, I'm going to just tie them together. And then when I'm in a classroom with the kids, I teach them how to make what's called a surgeon's knot. You take two fingers, you go around twice, you grab the little end that's here and put it between your fingers. And when you push this off, you can yank and all of a sudden two knots have been made in one motion. So again, one, two, put this between your fingers like that, push it off, and yank. So I now have four knots right here. If you don't understand how to do that, just tie a whole bunch of knots. If you don't know 
how to tie knots, just tie a whole bunch of something because we don't want that to come loose at all. And we don't want the bottom one to come loose at all. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in, grab the stick, go and come back out. There's only one stick you're grabbing on the bottom, not two. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie it together. Just a little bit of an end coming out there. One, two, grab and push it off. And now we have two knots. Now I'm going to do it again over the top. One, two, grab this in between my fingers, push it off, and yank. So now I have the bridle line attached. Now for this kite to fly perfect, it has to be at the right angle to the wind. If we attach our bridle line too far up here, this kite's going to flop around and the wind will never be able to grab it and give it any height. If we attach it too far down, it's going to keep on wanting to go up into the sky. It's not going to ever want to stabilize and find a nice right, a right, right place to fly. The place where we want to attach our bridle line is right out here on this corner. And this is when I talk to the kids about mathematics. We start talking about right angles and triangles and I start showing them how triangles and right angles are all over the world around them. But this corner is where we want to make a little knot so that I can attach my bridle line. So I'm just going to grab this up at the corner. I've got that right there. I'm going to run my finger down, make a circle and push it through. And then I'm going to push this knot back up into the corner as far as I can. So when it's finished, here's a little knot. This follows the bridle, this follows the, the spar right here, exactly over. The knot is right on the spar, and this one goes straight down. And this creates always the exact flying right, the right angle for this kite to fly the best. So now I'm going to take my line and undo it. I need to make a, a loop at the end so that we can attach it to there. And the way you do that is just dangle down a little bit and make a big loop and pull on it. So now I have just a big loop. You might have three or four kites and only one line, so you want to be able to attach it really fast and take it off and move it to another kite. And there's a way we attach it so that you can do that. We've got a loop there, we've got a loop here. What I'm going to do is take two fingers, my thumb and my first finger, and put it through this loop. See how I make a swing? Then I'm just going to drop it down in the middle and I'm going to touch my fingers together. And if I pull this loop off, I have now what is called a persig knot or a lark's head knot. See how this looks like a little beak, a little bird head with a little beak coming over? This tightens up and loosens up real easy. And that's what I'm going to use. I take this little loop and I take this little loop and I just put it over the top and I pull on it. And now my flying line is all attached to my kite. If I want to take it off, all I have to do is grab this and pull on it, and it pops right off. So again, I'm going to take my two fingers, make a swing, drop it right down, touch my fingers together, and let it fall off. So here I have my little pursing knot, and I take this, put it over that and pull on it and I'm ready to fly. And now this kite is going to want to take off because this kite loves to fly and they always fly really well. So I'll, we're going to swivel around and I'll watch, you can watch me launch it and I'll show you how to handle your flying line. You can see how well this kite is flying now. This is a low wind kite. It flies in about three, two to three miles an hour, so it just doesn't take much. 
It just flies really sweet. You just push on it a little bit and it goes higher. And it just will stay up all day. It's just a beautiful flying little kite. When I want to bring my kite down, right now this line is neutral. It doesn't have twists in it. Once the kite is out like this, when you wind it up, you always want to do figure eights. You put a twist in the line, you take it out. You put a twist in, you take it out. So you always do figure eights once your kite is in the air. And I'm going to bring this kite back to me. After I figure eight him all up, he doesn't want to come in. He wants to fly, but we're going to bring him in for a moment. And then we'll launch him. I'll show you again how to launch him. So he's coming in. Yeah. When you get ready, when you want to fly, launch your kite, always check the wind. I pull some grass up and let some grass down to see which way it's flying and the wind looks like it's that way. So I know I want the wind at the back of my head and I want it pushing the kite away. It needs to be pushing through me. And when I want to launch it, I'm just going to let some line out like this. And I'm going to wait for the wind to come up a little bit. And when it does, all I have to do is pull him into the air. It doesn't take much. He pulls in and I let him go backward. And then I pull him up again and I let him go backward. And I pull him up again and I'm just waiting for the wind to catch him. And there he goes. Now the wind is catching him and he's going to just take off and fly. You can see how my winder will just let him go. It just flips. And when I want to stop it, I just take it around the center and stop it and then I can hold on to it. If you have a young child at this point, if you want, you can put it around their wrist to make sure that they don't let go of the kite. But that's all you have to do let him go and then he's going to be flying all day. You can stake him out if you want, but it's more fun if you keep a hold of him. And then you can play with him. We always say that we are dancing with the wind when we have our kites out. See, I can bring him down, but if I want him to go up, I just pull the winder and he's going to go up higher. The wind is pretty low here today. So I have to play with him a little bit to keep him in the sky. But that's what's fun about kite flying. You just never know what the wind is going to be like on any day. You can see on this particular kite, I made it look like a body with legs going out the bottom. The wings coming off the side look a little bit like feathers with some breast feathers. And then I just decorated the tail to have a little bit of congruity with the kite. So it's kind of important to put eyes on your kite because when your kite's in the air, if there's raptors, eagles, or hawks in the sky, they're going to want to come over and see what's in the sky. They're very territorial. I didn't do it on this kite, but if I would have put eyes on the back of the kite also, when it is up in the sky, the eagles and hawks above it are going to see these eyes and think it's another bird and they're going to come over and try to, to find out what kind of a bird it is. I have actually had two golden eagles attack my kites when they are in the sky. They come after them and it's always great fun to watch. So there's lots of information on the internet about kites. The American Kite Flyers Association has all kinds of plans on their site. Uh, some of the plans are good, some of them aren't. It's kind of a trial and error thing, but most of them that you'll find on the American Kite Flyer Association website have been tried and tested, and they will work really well. Right now, I'm going to put my kite down. I'm going to pick up my winder. I have this pile of thread here. And again, I am going to do figure eights to get my kite line all nice and tight on my winder again. It doesn't take long to do it this way and this will keep the line nice and straight. 
so that you'll be able to hang your kite up on a wall when you get home and have it there as a piece of art, but a kite is only a kite if it's actually flying. Other than that, it's just a piece of art. So get your kite out. Use it. If you're not feeling particularly happy on a particular day, get your kite out and go fly it, and it'll make your spirits rise. Um, if you are feeling good on a particular day, get a friend and go out and go kite flying. It always lifts your spirits. You get to con be connected with the, the sky and the wind and be outside. And it is a very, very good thing for human beings to be outside in the air flying a kite whenever they can. It connects you to the world and is a wonderful, healthy thing to do. This is an example of a art kite, a large art kite, that actually depicts this area. This particular kite was from the Lewis and Clark collection and in about 2006 it was here in Great Falls. It was at the Lewis and Clark Interpretive Center. The kites were all over the airport and that was also the first year that we started bringing the buffalo kite collection out here to the First People's Buffalo Jump. Uh, we've been here now every year for I think about eight years bringing the kites uh, and flying them with the buffalo jump in the background and we've been pulling some pretty big crowds between the addle addle throwing and the different native games that they teach here at the First Peoples and then people come to see the kites. This is a stunning piece. Uh, this is a watercolor. The whole sky was done in one pass. She had to do it all at one time so that it would ha not have any kind of, of lines in it. The woman that was selected to do this uh, from the artists in the Great Falls area's name is Dawn Seavers. She is a art teacher from, I think, the town of Stanford, and she was selected uh, by the people here at the jump to uh, do this kite representing the Great Falls area and the First Peoples and when the explorers came through uh, years ago. And it really is a beautiful thing. It's done in ink. It's just ink and watercolor. It's a big wing shape. You can see the size is just a great big wing. And it, uh, it flies beautifully. Yeah, but it's, it's very delicate. It's a very special piece that we really love and value as a part of this collection. Here is another piece. This is one of the buffalo kites that features a whole bunch of buffalo. This is called a FLED, F-L-E-D. It's attached to numerous pieces with the spars on the other side. But here you can see all the buffalo on it. All kinds of different colors and shapes and sizes. And it is really spectacular to see this piece in front with the buffalo jump behind it. it really does set the scene for, for why this place is so important in the history of the, how they use the jump sites before they got horses. It's, uh, it really does show the buffalo running towards the edge of the, of the uh, buffalo jump and about ready to fall over. So that is a fun one. That was made by Drake Smith. And then here's another style. There's many different styles of kite shapes. This one is called an Edo. It is long and narrow. Again, lots of spars. And this one actually tells the story of Pompey's Pillar over south of Billings, Montana. This is called the place where the mountain lion sleeps. And you can see the big rock. You can see the streaks in the sky in the bottom. You can see the river going through. You see the big mountain lion on top. And on the bottom of the kite, it has William Clark's name, just as he put it on Pompey's Pillar on July 25th of 1806. And then we thought we'd also put the lion's paw print down there. 
if William Clark gets to have his signature on here, we thought we'd have, like the cat have his signature on here too. This is a big Edo. It's, it's challenging to fly. It catches a lot of wind. Uh, but it really is quite spectacular in the sky. The Buffalo Kite Collection as a whole now has 14 kites in it. The canvases have been painted by famous Native American artists that we, con we commission their work. We always pay for their work. You need to always pay artists for their work because they're trying to make a living. We never expect anybody, any artist, to donate anything to us because this is their, bed and their bread and butter. Um, but we've commissioned 14 different Native artists. We now represent 10 different tribes out here in the West. And they paint on the either ripstop, nylon, silk, cotton, whatever the material is that they want to paint on. And they do a painting. All we tell them is make it large, make it colorful, and make it depict buffalo so that it relates to the buffalo jump. And then they paint whatever they want. We get the, the material back and put the spars in, put the connection points. Everything we do with the smaller kite, we do with these bigger ones to make them able to fly. We use a lot heavier flying line. Uh, and we wear gloves when we start flying big kites like this because that thin line can really hurt your hands if you let it uh, cut, if the, there's much wind. But this collection travels. Every year we go to the First Peoples Buffalo Jump. We take them to the Madison Buffalo Jump over near Three Forks. We go down to the Vore Buffalo Jump, which is down near uh, in Wyoming, down uh, east of Gillette, near the South Dakota border. And we go up to the Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump, which is up in Canada every year. And, and uh, aside from that, we go to festivals and classrooms and powwows. We, we now hang these kites uh, when they're having indoor powwows. We hang them from the ceiling and the kites shimmer in the air. All the motion of the dancers below makes the kites just sort of shimmer and it makes a very beautiful thing uh, to put these above uh, the powwow dance floors. So we're kind of going far and wide with them now. We probably go to 30 or 40 events a year somewhere in the world now taking them and spreading the gospel about our native people and how this was their land and how they are still here and that we need to honor them and their customs and their habits and and uh, they are a big part of our society and that is what we're doing by showing their native art and letting people know that that uh, these indigenous people are still very much a, among us and a part of our present day culture so Thank you for your attention. Get a kite, get out and fly it. It'll make you feel good inside.